Hey, toy fans and toy makers and toy people in general, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick here. I've been in the toy industry for over 20 years, and usually I make videos recapping kind of some of the history of things I've worked on or things I maybe have fond memories of playing with and really the importance of toys in culture. And that's the third one there that I'm going to be talking about today. This video is going to be just a little bit heavier than the content, I think, of my usual video. I am going to be talking about toys, but in order to get to toys, I need to first talk about some of the background of communication and the history of that. And I'm going to approach this not from the angle of, you know, the history of the written word. I'm going to really more look at it at the way words tell stories and that emotional connection. Because at the end of the day, that is actually really is what my company is all about, Spectre Creative. I don't just make YouTube videos, I actually help clients develop product with emotional needs first. It's what I love doing. And this video definitely falls in that category. So we're going to look at how emotions drive storytelling. And to do that, we're, first we're going to look at the medium of messaging which starts sort of with something like this, Medium Cool, which was a uh, movie that was made by Haskell Wessel back in the uh, 60s. The reason I start with this is because this movie influenced a very great thinker named Marshall McLuhan, and he developed an idea called The Medium is the Message. I'm not gonna go too deep into his writing and his book, because honestly, there are entire college courses dedicated to reviewing his work, or at least his work being part of them. That was actually where I was first introduced to his work in some of my film classes. What I want to talk about is just the basic concept of what he means by the medium is the message. And the simplest way of putting it is that the medium that you're getting your content from, TV, books, art, whatever it is, dictates how the story can be told meaning a story that is told on television is a different way of telling a story than one that's just told around the campfire. The idea of content and context is what it's all about. That if you first look at where a message is coming from, that is key to truly understanding what the message is. Whether it's a message you're just reading on social media or it's a college textbook or a children's storybook that you're reading. For example, a videotape. A videotape is a physical thing that you put inside of a VCR. Yes, I know we don't really have videotapes these days, but it will then play a visual story, a movie. Movies can be shown at home, movies can be shown in theaters, and the experience you have watching it either at home or in a theater is going to dictate how you understand that story. I know, I'm trying not to go too deep here, so let's bring it back to comic books and toys. All right, so a Spider-Man comic book. The bottom line is Spider-Man being read in a comic book is a different experience than Spider-Man being watched as a movie. You have to agree that no matter what, movies and books tell a story differently. And I know most people say the book is open ways better, and usually that's the case, some exceptions to the rule. But the idea is not whether one is better than the other, but just understanding that there's a difference. When you read a book or you watch a movie, and I'm going to use those as sort of the baseline here, it is a different experience, but you can still be experiencing the same basic story. Movies are much more of a visual experience. You're probably sitting in the dark, in a seat or a couch, watching, versus a book is a passive experience where you're reading words. Not as visual, but you have to make up the moments in your mind. Two of my favorite books are a great example of this, Count of Monte Cristo and Moby Dick, are both books that utilize the written word to accomplish things that wouldn't translate as well to visual filmmaking. Yes, they've both had movies made of them, but in the case of Moby Dick, there are chapter and chapter after chapter about the technology of whaling, and that just wouldn't work 
straightforward in a movie. You have to change it. You have to change the book a little bit in order to make it work within the medium of a movie. Okay, so that was the background, understanding the medium as the message. Now let's talk action figures. The whole idea of this background and what I'm leading up to is that I believe action figures are a medium to tell stories. They are not just objects. I'm going to go through a couple examples to show what I mean. So let's look at Wilro Hood from the Star Wars Hasbro line. This is otherwise known as Ice Cream Maker Guy. He was a background character from Empire Strikes Back that fans really wanted made as a toy. And one of the accessories he comes with is his ice cream maker. And underneath is a rebel insignia because the idea was According to his new and improved toy bio, he was actually a rebel spy, and he was trying to sneak out rebel messages out of Cloud City. He was not just some random dude in the background running with a 1970s ice cream maker under his arm, which is how he gets the name Ice Cream Maker Guy. So, yeah, there is the 1970s ice cream maker that he's seen running with. And then flash forward, you find out in the Mandalorian series that this device is actually used to transport valuable things. Through the lens of a toy, this background prop has now become a much more important part of the Star Wars universe. All right, let's look at like, another example. And yes, please bear with me that we're dealing with Mighty Spectre here, my creation for Motu Classics. But I want everyone to look at the um, sort of the bullet holster around his thigh. You'll notice that there are missing bullets or missing time capsules. And that was done very deliberately because I wanted the idea to be that this character was out and about on adventures and didn't necessarily have time to refill his time capsules. The idea was he is in action. And if he had a full bandolier, that would mean that you know he just armed up. But by removing one of the capsules, it shows that he is in the middle of an adventure. Another example you sticking with the Masters of the Universe theme here is Battle Armor Skeletor, the vintage figure or the classics figure. The battle damage he has shows that he has been through an ordeal, through an adventure. Something has happened to this character. He's not just passive, he's not just waiting for the bus, but he's beat up. He actually had an adventure. And the battle damage is sort of signifies this. Another example and I'll show a couple toys that do this, is using toys to reveal information about characters or plot. So, for example, this The Blank figure from the Dick Tracy line was actually pulled from the line to be pushed back at a later date because the filmmakers realized that if this figure came out when the movie line came out, people would be able to remove the mask and learn the true identity of The Blank, which was the Madonna character from the movie, and that would ruin the surprise. So here you have another example. Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget, right? Everyone knows that he was just this arm and a cat on a desk, and this is how he was always shown in the animated series. Well, when it came time to doing an action figure of Dr. Claw, they decided for the first time to reveal his face, and they covered it up in packaging. So again, it would remain a secret until you bought it, but again, using the toy to tell a story, to reveal what his face looks like. We kind of stole this idea for Motu Classics when we did Horde Prime, another character who you'd never seen his face, and you would only see it for the first time by pulling off the mask after you bought the figure, and you'd get to see what he really looked like behind that mask for the very first time. And it doesn't just have to be on boys' toys. Another great example is this uh, Cinderella figure, I'm sorry, Sleeping Beauty, who has color-changed dress. Uh, the, the blue and the red are the same dress. They spin around. Uh, it's the same toy shown twice here. So again, you're telling a story. And by doing this, you're empowering children. Toys that tell stories, that have action features, make kids feel strong and make them feel in charge because the world is a very big scary place when you're a kid and the more you can feel strong the more happy you are toys are an interactive medium and that's really the whole point of what i'm trying to i guess put together with this video is that toys themselves in the, they're not played with they're just objects on the floor. You actually have to engage with a toy product to tell a story, to tell an imaginative tale, to take them on whatever adventure you want to do. And that is why toys are a medium. 
whether you're stacking them on your shelf to display them in a very specific way, or you're taking them off and having an imagination-based adventure using them as avatars for yourself or, and your friends, the toy itself is a medium, a conduit for telling the story. Toys themselves can tell stories, can tell content. Not just books, not just movies, not just social media, screens, but the actual object of toy, because it's involved in interactive play, and it's the only object that does this, these are not just passive objects. These are objects that actually help unleash and unlock imagination-based content, content that you create yourself. And the skills that children learn through play are so important to their mental and physical development. This is why toys are so important. And really, the, the whole point of kind of what I'm trying to say in this video about the medium is the message is that when you use toys to actually tell a story and you incorporate story-based content, then we can get kids back to playing with toys, not just you know, aimlessly looking at screens for that dopamine release, but engaging in imagination-based play. It's so important for children's development, and toys have a unique ability that no other consumer good has, and that is they can tell imagination-based stories. The medium is the message, and toys are a legitimate medium to tell a message, not just a child's plaything, not just something that sits on a shelf. Because when a child engages with toy product, it delivers happiness through storytelling. Likewise, when a collector collects, it delivers happiness through acquisition. Toys are a medium, and the medium is the message. So, and understanding toys as a medium is the key to making better toy product. I hope you liked this video. I hope it wasn't too uh, philosophical and maybe you even learned something. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know. Give it a thumbs up, a subscribe. Let me know in the comments. I try to read all the comments. I don't always respond to everyone, but I do read them. Let me know what you like and uh, I'll try to keep making more videos based on the stuff you suggest. Thanks for watching.